Hi everybody and welcome to part two of the double barrel bug vacuum hydraulic retrofit. This part focuses on the addition of a check valve and its associated hosing at the front of the machine. The check valve is intended to prevent cavitation in the motors on shutdown. When the PTO is disengaged, the pump stops spinning, which stops hydraulic oil from flowing to the motors. The motors and fans were spinning at approximately 2500 RPM and under their own momentum, they will continue to spin for some time. During this wind down period, cavitation is possible because the motors act as pumps, which are now starved of oil because the PTO pump is no longer supplying oil to the motors from the reservoir. The addition of the check valve will now allow oil from the return side of the motors to be pulled across the circuit and supplied to the pressure side. The new hydraulic plumbing should allow the motors to coast freely to a stop upon machine shutdown. Generally, it is recommended that the tractor is brought slowly down to idle RPM before the PTO is disengaged. Okay, so now that we understand the purpose of this retrofit, let's get to work. If you turn to page nine of your manual, you will see a brief description of the procedures along with an illustration showing the additional hydraulic lines and check valve as installed. Take extra care that you get the check valve installed with a proper orientation, shown here by the yellow diagram. Moving to the next page, we have the parts list. We have a check valve rated to at least 25 GPM with 3 quarter inch ports. Next, we have the two 3 quarter inch male pipe to 3 quarter inch male JIC fittings for connection to the new JIC hoses. And lastly, we have two 3 quarter inch JIC run tees. Please make sure that the tees you get match up with the picture shown here. For hosing, you have some options on length and fitting type, but you will need two sections of hose, and I would recommend crimping one straight female JIC swivel end on each hose and leaving the other end uncrimped. For the installation shown in this video, we use the 6 inch and 38 inch hose length. Each hose has a straight number 12 female JIC swivel on one end and a 90 degree elbow number 12 JIC swivel on the other. Now that you have your parts ready, flip to the next page and read through the written procedure. The following page has an illustration which identifies important locations prior to the retrofit. Now that we're familiar with the process, let's work through it together. Before we start disconnecting hoses on the machine, it's a good idea to assemble some of these parts separately. Here we have the hoses, check valve, and adapter fittings. The first thing we are going to do is redraw the hydraulic symbol for the check valve in bright red ink. This is a good idea because you will be less likely to install the valve incorrectly, and it shows up well if you need to send someone a picture of the hose routing. Next, we'll apply thread sealant to the male pipe threads and install the fittings into the check valve. The fittings should be completely tightened in the valve, but the hoses should only be installed hand tight at this time. In our installation, we have the longer 38 inch hose installed on the pressure side of this valve and the short 6 inch hose on the return side. Remember, the arrow of the check valve symbol points towards the return side of the hydraulic system while the ball is on the pressure side. Now that we're back to the machine, uh, we wanna be very careful with this step. Make sure you identify the correct hose. So I've started at the oil cooler and traced this one inch hose all the way back to the next junction. So this is the return oil junction. Uh, and that's a one inch hose with a three quarter inch fitting on the end. So as we disconnect the hose, obviously it's leaking a lot. So you're gonna to wanna to have a drain pan below the machine. You put that three quarter inch run T on there that we showed earlier, and now you have an extra port. So what's gonna to connect to that extra port is the six inch hose from the check valve subassembly that we put together earlier. And then once the return side's done, we're gonna jump over to the pressure side, which is just gonna be the other one inch hose in the area. We'll again put one of those uh, three quarter inch run T's on there. Reconnect the one inch hose to the top and then with this extra port, we've now attached the 38 inch hose. And so we've now connected the return side oil and the pressure side oil 
with that check valve. And that's why the orientation of the valve is so important because as you can see there um, with that red drawing that the ball side is towards the pressure part of the hydraulic system and the arrow side is on the return part of the hydraulic system. Now that you got everything put together, um, this is the right time to go through and fully tighten all the connections if you haven't done so already. And it's definitely good practice just to double check everything. What we have here is a cold start procedure. So you turn the red switch on, hold the up button on the boom while engaging the PTO with the tractor at idle. And what this does is just reduces the amount of oil that goes crashing through the motors when the oil is cold. Uh, and this is just a good idea when you've drained a bunch of oil or really any time the oil is especially cold. So now that we're started up, uh, what we're doing here is just verifying that when we lift that right side boom, that the new hosing that we added uh, isn't interfering with anything and it's holding up the way we want it to. We've now completed part two of the double barrel bug vacuum hydraulic plumbing retrofit. And this part of the process was to add that anti-cavitation check valve. Um, so if you have any questions, please do uh, reach out to me. My email is listed here. Um, and just let me know which part of the uh, process you're having trouble with, and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks again for watching.